Hello everyone, my name is Pastor Jeff and welcome to Activate Kids Online. We have an awesome day planned, but before we get too much into it, I think that uh, we should even find out maybe what we're talking about today. What do you say? So uh, let's check out this video. Hello there everybody, once again it is I, Josh. We're continuing our series called I'm in Trouble. <laughs> Can we stop this, please? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm in trouble. The series where I've brought a few friends. Back in my day, chicken nugget cost a quarter. I can't have chicken nuggets because I'm allergic to fish. Uh, my good sir, if I may interject, uh, chicken nuggets are not a fish. They're not? What are they? Chicken nuggets are a type of intelligent alien creature, specifically from the ninth dimension. Uh, more specifically than that, the planet Snorglax. Bro, what is wrong with you? Moving right along, we're studying people in the Bible who found themselves in serious trouble. And we're gonna find out how God can help us get out of trouble. Have you ever been in trouble before? Kinda like these guys? Or those guys? Well, last week we talked about a guy named David. Yeah, that's right, King David. David did not have an easy life. Before he became king, he was on the run from King Saul, who wanted him dead. Can you imagine the ruler of a whole country coming after you? Yeah, I'd run too. Hey, how fast could David run? I, I don't know. Could he run faster than my dog Blue? He only got three legs. I don't know what happened to the fourth one. I lost it. Oh, that's kind of sad. Oh no, he's better. He used to only have one leg and we called him Pogo Stick. Yeah, back in my day, I could run faster than a... Faster than a... Faster... Boy, I love apple pudding. It doesn't matter how fast David ran, the fact is he was scared for his life. So much so that he was hiding in a cave. A cave? David was trapped. He went from having a whole country loving him to being scared and lost and alone in a cave. That's some serious trouble. So what should we do when we feel scared and lost and alone? What did David do? Did he cry? <laughs> How's he ever gonna get out of this cave? He better get out of there quick before bats land on his head and lay eggs. Jimmy Don, bats don't lay eggs. Uh, he could, in theory, dig down deeper into the cave and become king of the mole people. I got a mole on my toe. Bro, so do I. Are we mole buddies? Listen, why don't you guys pay attention to the lesson while I try to rein things back in around here? We're gonna learn all about how God can help us when we're in trouble and we feel all alone. We'll see you next time on I'm in trouble. Who let the bat in here? Ah, help me, help me, he's gonna lay eggs in my hair. Will you guys stop yelling for five seconds? Ah, 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 ah. Oh, my bad, gentlemen, come back, Gertrude. I keep him there for science. This is gonna be a long series. So today we are talking about how I'm not alone. There's plenty of times where we can feel kind of lonely, maybe that we've been left out of something, but that's not really something we need to generally worry about. In fact, we've always got somebody with us. I'll give you a hint, it's God. I mean, stay for the rest of the lesson, obviously, but you know, spoiler alert. Anyway, check out this video on what you gotta know. What you gotta know What you gotta know What you gotta know What you gotta know oh, 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 oh. Hey, it's me, Wiggy Pop And I'm here to have a rockin' time And to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we are talking about how you don't have to face trouble alone. So every time today, somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. When I'm in trouble, God's there on the double. Sometimes we can feel lonely. <laughs> I'm all alone. <laughs> it's the worst day of my life and I'm all by myself. Nobody understands. <laughs> oh no, now it's 
It's okay for you to cry, but never think you're all alone. God is always there, even on your bad days. So every time today somebody asks you what you got to know, you tell them this. When I'm in trouble, God's there on the double. And that right there is what you got to know. My name is Wiggy Pop, and I'll see you next time. Rock on! <laughs>Howdy y'all, how's it going? Name's Jim McGrow. I'm here today to give you a Bible story. Now my Bible story today, it's coming from the book of Psalms. Well, Psalms over here, it's kind of crazy, right? We got all kinds of stuff going on in the book of Psalms. And uh, for instance, the story we're going to talk about today is about a man named David. Now David, he's got all kinds of things going on in his life, right? David over here, it's the guy that he slayed himself a giant named Goliath. Goliath here, he was, he was a big guy. I'm talking like, like think of my cousin Betsy. Yeah, but, but even bigger. Like, Betsy's more this. Goliath's more this. You know what I'm saying? But either way, uh, you know, big guy. Real big guy. And uh, David, you'd think after something like that happened, he, you know, he'd just be king of Cotton Hill, right? He'd be in charge of everything. But that's not really what happened. In fact, there was a man there named Saul. Saul actually was head honcho around there. He was kind of the king. Uh, we obviously don't have kings, uh, not not in my country at least. But uh, you know, we he, he that Saul guy. He had a lot a lot going on for himself. And Saul here, uh, he did not like himself, David. And David, in fact, uh, he uh, he did everything he could to make Saul happy. He uh, he uh, he probably. Uh, you know, cleaned his toenails. He probably uh, tasted his drinks for him to make sure that there was nothing wrong. Probably hit his broccoli for him so he didn't have to eat it. Uh, you know, everything that somebody could do to make somebody else happy. But Saul wasn't having any of that. And he actually wanted to kill David. I'm talking like, 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 you know, how you'd hunt an animal kind of thing. He did not like himself, that David fella. So David, he had to go himself for a run, right? He had to run on out of there. He had to get on out and, uh, you know, he ended up himself in a cave. And in that cave, he sat down. And I don't know about you, but... Oh, there's my sunglasses. Wait. I got sunglasses all over the place. Look at me. Uh, uh, David here, you'd think after a day like that, you know, you'd be singing some sad songs. You know, he'd be singing about how uh, he did some good stuff, but nobody liked him. Uh, he could sing about uh, all kinds of things. And he could sing about how, uh, you know, you know, how he was just kind of stuck in a cave. Uh, there's all kinds of things. And instead of doing that, though, David, uh, he made himself a decision. Instead of singing, you know, a country song, he could have, like, lost his tractor, lost his dog. He lost everything that he had, lost his house, lost his family. But he didn't do that now. No, 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 not old David. David here, he made himself a different choice. He decided he was going to sing himself a happy song. He was going to sing himself, instead of a song like, like, I just lost my kingdom to a guy named... Saul, he was like, more like, you know, happy or kind of like a bro country kind of thing. Like, I'm still alive and I'm still kicking, yeah. I like to sing, I like to sing, and I'm a happy-go-lucky guy. You know, like that. Obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm not much of a, I'm not, I ain't much of a musician, right? Uh, I, I got a lot of other amazing talents, and that's just, that's not one of them. But, uh. Yeah, that's the story of David, and everything worked out okay for David in the in the long run, but in this particular moment, David made himself a choice. He was going to be happy. He wasn't going to see himself country. He was going to see himself, I guess, some of that pop music or whatever they call it. Well, hey, listen, I, I left the engine run, running in my truck, and I got to go uh, take on care of that, so I'm going to leave you all to it, and uh, hey, keep ye hauling. You ain't yeed your last haul yet, so uh, we'll see you guys on the... On the other side of the tractor, take care. Cause where I come from, it's cornbread and chicken. Thank you, thank you, oh yes. So wonderful to have you, please hold your applause. You may be seated, oh thank you, so wonderful. Now, welcome back, I am the actor and I am perhaps 
the greatest method actor of all time. And I'm not acting when I say that. Now, boys and girls, I do believe that you could perhaps be the greatest method actor of all. Oh, let's be serious. You'd probably never be as good as me. But anyways, I can help you out. All you need to do is learn today's power verse using method acting. Haha, -ha. today's power verse says... The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. Psalm 34, 19. What a wonderful, fantastic power verse. Now, if there's one thing I've learned as the greatest method actor of all times, it's that the best way to memorize your lines, or the power verse in this instance, is to do it in character. So let's find out what today's character shall be. Let's see. Ah, yes, today's character says we are playing a rooster with six legs. How peculiar. <laughs> Acting, thank you, that's not it. We're actually playing a fish. So everyone, you know the way a fish sounds. It goes bloop, 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 bloop. So you're going to say the power verse just like that on the count of three. Get ready. One, two, and three. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. Psalm 34, 19. Acting, thank you, that was fantastic. Now boys and girls, it's time for me to get going. I've got a rehearsal to make. I will see you all later. Exit, stage, left? I don't know. So last week we talked about trouble and how sometimes we're in actual danger. Now we've all maybe had a moment like that or maybe we're in trouble because we did something wrong, but today it's gonna to be a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about trouble in a different sense. See, there are times when we just feel alone. We feel like there's nobody around to take care of us, there's nobody around to help us, and we're just on our own, like on an island, stranded, with nobody around us. Well, the truth is that we're never truly alone, but there are some things that we can remember in order to help us get through those times when we feel that way. So the first thing I want you to remember is, it's okay to cry. Now, a lot of times we can feel embarrassed when we're having a bad day and we just, man, we just wanna cry. But the truth is, there's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with feeling emotional and feeling pain because of what's happening. We all feel down sometimes, that's just the truth of it. We can see in scripture all the time that people cried a lot because things happened, bad things can happen. And it's better to show the emotion and let that be real in the moment than bottle it up and hold it inside because then sometimes that sadness can turn into anger and that anger can turn into hate and that hate can lead us, that's right, to the dark side. But the truth is, is that it's not always that cut and dry, right? But we need to be feeling free to be able to have a conversation about how we're feeling and also be okay with expressing our emotion like crying. So with that in mind, the second thing I want you to remember is you are not alone. Now, sometimes we feel really alone in what's going on, right? We look around us and we say, man, my friends aren't here, my family's not here, my teachers aren't here, there's no one for me to talk to. But the truth is, is that we're never really alone, right? We always have somebody there with us. And that person is God. God is there for us to have a conversation with. We can talk to him when we need somebody to talk to, and we can tell him about our problems. Because the truth is, is that when we tell God about our problems, you're not gonna believe this, he can actually do something about it. And sometimes he wants us to do something about it, or sometimes it's just a storm that we have to weather and get through. But when we take time and we talk with God, then we're truly never really alone. We always have somebody there with us. So with that in mind, the third thing I want you to remember is God hears you when you call for help. We talked about it last week, and we're going to talk about it this week too. God hears you when you call for help. When something happens, you can call on God for help. Now, we should obviously, as we talked about last week, worship God when he helps us and even when he doesn't help us with our situation. But we can always call on him and he hears us and he wants to be there for us because he cares about us and he loves us. So whenever you're feeling alone, you have somebody to talk to and somebody to call on. And that somebody is God 
in Jesus. So with that in mind, I want to take a second and I want to pray for you. God, thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for this chance to be here and to worship you and to spend time with you. I pray that as we get ready to move on with our day, that you'll bring us back here at the appointed time and that you'll help us remember that we're never really truly alone, that we always have you that we can count on and we can depend on. Thank you again for this awesome day. In your name we pray, amen. All right, it is now time for us to go and have ourselves a... I just like doing that. Rewind. Check it out. Rewind! Take care. See you next time.